the next thing I wanted to update folks on, I'm not sure if you were at the staff faculty town hall um, that we had last week looking at the some of the data that we use for whether or not classes should be in person. You may have also heard Tuscaloosa decided this week following the celebrations on Monday night on the strip to um, allow faculty to choose virtual for two weeks if they wanted to choose virtual um, to try to mitigate any kind of spread that might be going on in Tuscaloosa. Although, again, we don't have the data yet from Tuscaloosa from how much spread we're going to get from Monday night. Um, the, the, what we estimated based on outbreaks that have happened in Alabama in the past and also what the northern tier of states observed in this most recent wave um, was that somewhere right around this week, we would hit the peak and start coming back down the other side. This curve in black shows the actual cases on average, and then dashed gray shows estimated cases, and then actual hospitalizations in orange solid, and then dashed orange for estimated. Um, basically, I estimate hospitalizations um, by looking at historic levels. So how many people wound up in the hospital given the number of cases circulating, and you can see in general, if you look about 14 days after the case, the average case occurs, the ratio of um, hospitalizations to cases stays pretty consistent. Although the gap has been widening, especially right here, you'll notice how much um, further down the orange line is from the black line, which indicates that fewer people are winding up in the hospital for a given case. The other place we saw that was right back here. That's when the, the younger folks were getting sick back in August um, at, at Auburn and Alabama. Um, but there was not a, a bump in hospitalizations following those outbreaks at the universities. So that really led us at the university to, to decide that it was safe to hold in-person classes uh, in the same way that we had been holding them in the past um, with social distancing and masking required and regular testing. Um, so the, the student testing plan has changed for this semester. Residence halls and people participating in high transmission settings like singing, playing an instrument, or playing a sport um, are going to be tested weekly now. All other students are going to have the opportunity to test monthly, but they're not going to be required to test monthly. And faculty, staff, you are able to get a test anytime you feel that you might need to get one. Um, I'm, I don't know if that was as clear as it could have been, um, but if you're reading green mail, be sure to, to register for an account if you're interested in being tested. Uh, so rather than Sentinel testing, we're providing testing for close contacts. So if you think you were in close contact with someone for COVID, don't worry about what the definition is. It's just whatever you perceive. If you perceive you were in close contact, you can register for an asymptomatic test. Uh, asymptomatic testing is going on at Kirkland and Volcker Hall. It's really easy if you didn't do the sent sentinel test last semester, you go and double swab both um, nasal passages, put it in an envelope and you're done. Again, that's just the asymptomatic pathway. There's also a symptomatic pathway. Um, if folks need, um, if you're having COVID symptoms and you need to go up the, the Highlands parking deck to do the symptomatic. The good news I have for you today is that um, looking at the hospitalizations and cases that we're seeing currently, they're actually decreasing pretty substantially. This is from the Bama Tracker. If you use Bama Tracker, that peak that um, I had showed you before was kind of a plateau. I wasn't sure how long we'd stay high, but it doesn't appear we're staying high very long. The last, we've sustained five days of decreases, which is, is great. Um, that, that indicates that we may be on the path to decreasing more rapidly than originally anticipated, um, which the, the good news about that is the new hospitalization projections are showing that we're going to start coming back down in hospitalizations um, much sooner than we thought, potentially even as early as um, the second week in February being comfortable again in terms of the number of people hospitalized with COVID. So right now the models are looking much better than they were at the end of the year. Um, keep your fingers crossed that the things that are gonna impact that are uh, Monday night, depends on how much community spread occurred with the, the mass gatherings that were happening. There are some planned, um, I don't know what they'll wind up being, whether they're demonstrations or people are gonna try to enter the Capitol in Montgomery, but they, we know that there are people that are planning on going to Montgomery next week. Um, and potentially the Birmingham City Courthouse. Or, so we just have to watch for those things to see what happens. And then the last big thing is K-12. Um, K-12 is back in person and there are more kids in person now than there were last semester. So that could also drive transmission. 
But all those things aside, the indicators are pointing in the right direction right now.